Mars bar protein slice. Hmm. I wonder if that can be done. Everybody up and say yes, it can. Say it again. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Let's do it. What's happening on YouTube? It's Angus here. Thanks so much for stopping by to click on this video and um, welcome to my very first recipe video for 2020. It's been a little while since I've made a, um, an actual recipe video. Um, obviously, I come up with all sorts of sick food creations all the time, but um, yeah, like it's been a little while since I've actually made a recipe video. You guys are giving some sick feedback both on YouTube and on my social media um, that you guys love recipes, um, which is cool because obviously with the way that I go about making recipes, it's kind of like making more macro friendly versions of the classic. So if you go into the YouTube channel itself, you'll see that there's actually a playlist called macro friendly recipes. And that's where you can check out some of my big heavy hitters. Um, like I've got literally all sorts of stuff, mostly sweet based stuff. But if you guys want to see some more savory based recipes and that sort of thing, let me know in the comments below. Um, but the reason why typically I, you know, um, am all over it with making sweet based videos um, is because, well, all these teeth are sweet, <laughs> meaning I love making yeah sweet based stuff. So in this video today, we're going to be rocking out with um, basically a macro friendly version of the classic Mars bar slice. Now I've got some sick memories of Mars bar slice. Hey, like um, I remember my dear mother. She used to um, back when I was in primary school. You know how obviously you go on excursions and stuff like that. My primary school did this cool thing as part of getting students good at learning how to cook, um, where each I think it was like each week or maybe once each month. There would be a, a specific student's mum who came in. There was usually about three or so that came in, and they would teach how to make a specific thing to the class. Um, and I remember my mum, she um, yeah, she taught us how to make Mars bar slice. So a typical Mars bar slice, if you're not familiar, is really simple. Like it's got rice bubbles, um, which is a cereal here in Australia. So it's got rice bubbles. It's got a couple or a few Mars bars. It's got a shit ton of butter, and then it's usually got sugar and honey. Um, and yeah, so it pretty much contains no element of protein or good nutrition about it at all, but it tastes fucking glorious. Oh my gosh. Really, the only word for it is... So what I've tried to do with, do with this video, um, and this recipe in particular, um, yeah, like it just came to me out of nowhere, like, how can I create a macro-friendly version of the classic Mars bar slice because I haven't really seen it done well online. And um, yeah, I've done it, I've come up with it. It's sick, it's so nice, seriously, like it gives you that Mars bar sense. Without Mars bars, it's got a lot of protein. Um, with making this whole lot, it serves eight, so that way, yeah, like the macros are decent. And with each one, it's got more than 10 grams of protein. So um, yeah, well and truly something you can have as a snack or as part of dessert or whatever. In my case, I usually mostly just have it with, I mean, sorry, for dessert with some other shit alongside it. So yeah, it tastes really, really nice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump to the kitchen now, make sure you follow along. Remember, this is a video recipe and it will have the quantities and stuff on the actual video itself. If you are keen for the actual written and you don't actually really give a shit about the you know following along with me and that sort of thing well you can just easily just jump into the comments and you can check it out there all right um and yeah follow along really hope you um yeah get some sick value from checking this out i really love it i've made it a few times now I've tried and tested it's sick um obviously if you do make it tag me on social media do it for the burgers um we'd love to see how yours goes and if it tastes better than mine um and yeah without further ado let's go head into the kitchen Yo ho ho and welcome to voiceover Angus mode. So um, get excited. I um, hope you're enjoying the video so far. Um, and obviously welcome to high protein Mars bar slice. So to kick off this, you're gonna need only just a few different things, um, six things in total. So to start with, get your saucepan set over some nice low heat and choose and, or not choose, but um, break up the two protein bars that you have rolled with. Um, for myself, the reason why I've actually chosen um, these two Masashi base bars is simply because, well, I've found that the high protein Mars bars that you can get, um, they're like, I saw them for like $4.50 or $5 each, whereas these ones that I've used here, I know they taste nice, they've got better macros, they've got less calories, um, and yeah, they're only like $2 or $2.50 each, so hashtag bargain, yo. 
So I rolled with two of them, and basically what you're gonna be doing first is you're gonna break it up, um, and then you're gonna have it over the low heat with the goal to obviously, well, melt it, just as if you were trying to melt a Mars bar. Now, naturally, normal Mars bars, they're pretty much just, well, yeah, fat and carbs and sugar, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, um, but obviously with this trying to be a macro-friendly recipe, we wanna have more protein and less calories per serve in comparison to normal Mars bar slice. Um, so yeah, now to be able to make this, uh, in terms of this component, um, we're going to be adding some Nutellix. Now this is a dairy-free form of, um, I guess you can call it butter if you want, um, but I use 50 grams and the purpose of this is to be able to help the, the protein bars be able to melt properly. Um, and actually what's going to happen is that, um, yeah, well obviously it's going to melt gradually and your goal is to basically smush the wooden spoon into the protein bars. Um, to gradually get them to, well, yeah, like, I guess you can call it like fall apart or, um, you know, become kind of one with the melted butter um, and yeah, do it over consistent low heat, just as if you were trying to make like a ganache or something like that. The two protein bars that I chose were um, obviously Masashi, the two that I chose were, um, there was a peanut butter flavored one, so it was a peanut butter crunch and the other one was a milk chocolate brownie. Um, so these are both, are both high protein, which is obviously why I chose them. You could use any sort of other protein bar that you like. Um, it's just a means of obviously being weary that the macros would be different based on what you use. Um, these two that I got were just from Woolies in the health aisle. Um, and yeah, they weren't even on special. I believe I just got them for $2.50 or $2 each, I think it was from memory. So yeah, in comparison to normal high protein Mars bars, um, yeah, saved a decent amount. I pretty much got two for one, if you will. So once you've been able to get this all combined nicely, um, basically it's just a means of getting it down to almost to the point where it's all combined in like a melted chocolate. It's not gonna quite get that way, but this is what you want it to get looking like in terms of what you see just here. Um, and yeah, set it aside. And then what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding the Nutri-Grain, which is the cereal of choice. Um, normal Mars bars, I mean, not normal Mars bars, normal rice bubbles is fine. Um, but they're basically just carbs, they don't really have too much nutrients about them. So the reason why we're choosing protein is because it's obviously a very high uh, protein cereal. It's one of the highest protein cereals you can get. Obviously Special K could be a substitute or you could try with um, All Brown, which I've tried before, but you know, naturally Nutri-Grain has a bit of sugar and it's a nice carb source. So this contributes to um, the high protein count of this recipe. Then what you're gonna be doing is, um, or even before that, <laughs> you have a dog, um, trust me, like dogs love Nutri-Grain, must just be something about it, but my boy always loves hanging about while I'm uh, doing some cooking or baking, um, and he's really good at helping lift the bowls as well, so he is. But um, yeah, so over low heat, just continue combining the Nutri-Grain with the mixer that we were just working with. The goal is to get it so that every bit of Nutri-Grain has a bit of the good stuff on it, um, so that, that way, well, it's gonna contribute to everything sticking together and forming properly. Um, when we are um, pressing it into the, uh, the baking dish. Now, obviously this isn't gonna get baked. Um, all you're gonna be doing is just forming it in the fridge later on. So you'll see that I, I in, in, in this frame here, I have some baking paper. The idea of this is that it's easier to get the whole entire thing out once we have basically left it sitting in the fridge or the freezer, um, as opposed to just spraying it or putting some oil or some butter or greasing it or whatever. Um, this is a nice, easy way to go about it. So once you've got it all combined, um, the next step is to basically um, put it all into your baking tray or whatever you've got set up. Um, and then basically press it all in so that it's all nice and firmly pressed together. Um, naturally with something like this, I'd probably just suggest using a wooden spoon or you could use the back of a teaspoon or a tablespoon that's been wet so that it doesn't stick to it. But I thought, hey, save washing up, do it this way. Um, and press it in nicely so that it goes to all the edges of the dish that you've got set up because um, you want to make sure that it's fairly flat as best possible. You can see there that it's all nice and um, caramelly looking. That's because well, we melted the Mars, I mean, so we, we melted the protein bars nice and effectively. You could, if you wanted to, um, add some honey to that mixture that we did before. I've done that before, but I find that this is pretty, you know, sweet enough to get the, um, the good taste rolling. And as you can see there, it's nice and evenly pressed. Now, the next layer we're going to be doing is basically, if you think about Mars bars, they've got that nougaty type layer, then they've got a caramelly type layer, then they've got chocolate on top. So rather than doing caramel, which we could do, but you know, this is like the idea of this recipe is so that it's got lots of nice protein. Um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using some powdered peanut butter chocolate flavor. This is by PB2. 
you can get this from iHerb, um, which is a site online, and you can get it from quite a few retailers as well. You're gonna be using six tablespoons. Um, and I forgot to say as well with Nutrigrain, I forgot to say how much you're gonna use. You're gonna use three cups, all right? But with this PB2, so you've got six tablespoons of dry mix, and you're gonna gradually start incorporating the water. Key word there being gradually, because you'll find that it can be like, People, when I find when they're trying to make PB2 paste or you know whatever, they can easily put too much water or not enough. And the best way to get around that is to just add it gradually, little bit by bit, um, and then yeah, just consistently stirring until you get all the lumps out. So as you can see here, it's just a means of being patient and going along and um, just gradually beating out those lumps. <laughs> um, so in other words, it's gonna yeah work out your forearms quite a bit. Hashtag arm better, yo. Um, it's probably going to take you about a minute or so in terms of consistent stirring to be able to get a good consistency. You can see there that I've almost got it um, to the point that it's kind of like the consistency of a nice dressing kind of. I don't even know what you'd say, but as you can see, it's like it's fairly runny, but it's also semi-thick. And then it's just a means of um, pouring it over your base mix. Um, I just used the bowl and then just did it in a nice line. Um, and then you'll find that because Nutrigrain is kind of like a brick and you've got little bits of holes everywhere in between the different Nutrigrain bricks, the, the peanut butter mixture would just seep its way down into the holes of the base layer, which is awesome because it means that when you chop this up later on, you're gonna get that nice peanut butter taste through, well, with the base layer. Um, and it's just really nice because it's gonna be um, varying textures as well in terms of contrast because the base is going to be quite you're going to get those 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 crunches and stuff and then the bait and then the middle layer is going to be nice and caramelly that tastes like peanut butter then obviously the top layer you're going to be working with some chocolate so basically use any dark chocolate of choice the one that i used was a full block of dark cooking chocolate from audi so it was some special so happy days um, there's not necessarily any one that's better than anything else it's just a means of how well it melts so you're going to break it all up and then you're going to over low heat i just use the same saucepan um, you're just going to stir it over low heat consistently and by consistency, consistently, I really mean consistently because if you leave it, um, it can easily curdle and separate and that sort of stuff. I've seen that happen in MasterChef sometimes and all sorts of cooking shows. You want to consistently be on the boil with stirring it so that way, um, yeah, you can just get all the lumps out of the chocolate. What you could do as a backup option if you wanted to is you could do it in the microwave um, for increments of like 30 seconds and then just give it a stir, throw it back into 30 seconds again, give it a stir, you could do it that way. Um, but I prefer to do it this way, that way I can easily kind of watch it from over the top to make sure that it is done properly. And as you can see here, we've got no lumps, it's just a nice, well, yeah, it's nice and runny, it's perfectly melted and we're ready to drizzle it over the top of the, um, the, the entire thing, really. Um, if I were you, just layer it across. Um, you, depending on the sort of baking tray that you're using, you may be able to get it to the point where you can completely cover the whole thing in chocolate. Um, I barely managed to do so, and that was with 200 grams of chocolate, but hey, either way, it looks sick. You could even use a stick and do like that marble type effect thing or whatever, but either way, as long as you use all the chocolate and then cover it across, you're laughing. Now, at this sort of stage, you've pretty much done the bulk of the prep work in terms of making this. All you're gonna need to do is just basically bomb it in the fridge um, ideally leave it overnight or for a few hours or you could bomb it in the freezer for an hour because you just want everything to set and then if you were doing it that way you would take it out for a few minutes before slicing it up into eight. The macros for this in terms of the actual breakdown per eighth of this entire recipe is 318 calories. Um, it's got just under 15 grams of fat. It has 26.3 grams of carbs, 16 grams of protein and no fiber sad times <laughs> but um yes that's per eighth of the recipe fairly decent serves um and this tastes so nice guys seriously so if you can follow along with this you should be pretty sweet to be able to make this yourself um and obviously it's just the patience of letting it set and cool down and then bob's your uncle
there we go fam, hope you got some, uh, yeah, some sick insights for how fairly simple it is to make a high protein based um, Mars bar slice. Um, obviously as you saw there we use Nutrigrain instead of the classic rice bubbles. Um, you know we use some uh, protein bars as opposed to the conventional Mars bars that is in a Mars bar slice. So yeah, it's not really overly difficult to be able to make this one. So in other words, if you're a dumb fuck with cooking, you shouldn't really have any dramas being able to follow along with me. Um, obviously, if you make this yourself and it turns out sick and it tastes really good, I'd love to hear how you went. Tag me in social media. Um, do it for the burgers. Or if you're on Facebook, tag me, Angus uh, Fairbairn. Um, and yeah, like, really hope you make this. Like, it's seriously so good. And um, super easy to make. It's just a means of having the patience to let it all set in the fridge or bomb it in the freezer if you want it to set fast so that way you can get stuck into it so um yeah thanks for watching if you like this recipe and you reckon it was a sick video give it some love if you're new to the channel and you haven't kind of seen some of my videos before highly suggest you just check out the videos upload section there's heaps of cool stuff to check out lots of content around flexible fat loss and um just really just unconventional stuff that you probably haven't seen before so i'd highly suggest you check out my other videos and subscribe because why wouldn't you my videos are sick and um, yeah, follow in my social media journey. You can check out my handles in the description below of the video. And um, yeah, maximize the comment section if you have any questions around um, this recipe itself. And other than that, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Peace out, thanks for watching. See you next time in the YouTube world.